Yeah. Hey. 
and give Abba, Daddy God, a big smile. Lift up your hands as if you're going to hug him. Give him a big hug. Ha ha. Woo! Forget. 
much new worship. You can whistle. Whistle. I want to welcome everybody. Yeah, there you go. I want to welcome everybody. This is our um, celebration service. We're here to celebrate the Lord. Hallelujah. We're here to celebrate the family that the Lord has given us. And um, we're here to celebrate that the season has changed. Hallelujah. And these words for me are highly prophetic. It's not with a weak hand. His arm is not too short to reach us. Hallelujah. I don't care what the circumstances. I don't even care what's, I mean, we care. But we're not driven by circumstances. We are driven by the love of God that casts out all fear. So we want to make a declaration in this place that our God is an almighty God. Our God is a saving God. Our God is one whose hand is outstretched towards his people. He's not got his hands behind his back. He's not got his hands saying, I'm not going to touch you. So this is my song, people. Whose song is it? Whose song is it? Come on, let's make a prophetic declaration in this place. worshiping. Hallelujah. Um, I believe you guys sang very prophetic songs today. You know, with a mighty hand, he is going to be saving. Hallelujah. He has already started. Now, um, for those of you who are here, we just want to welcome everybody watching online. Um, I don't know which, just want to thank everybody um, for joining us. Today is um, kind of a combined service, so we want to welcome the South Hall family here with us. Yay! We want to welcome the Ilford family here with us. Praise God. Um, I just thank the Lord. You know, I've never been in England where there's so much sun. I was remembering, a, 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 actually... Um, a prophetic word that the Lord gave a few years ago and it's from the book of Proverbs and um, the Lord spoke to me and I, I was looking for the Bible I wrote it in at that time about a time 
of a change of season when the sun shines. You know, and I, I it was at, when we were at the at the other building uh, that the Lord gave a prophetic prophetic word, and um, I'm really thankful um, for this the season and this sign that we're having. Um, you know, where's Anna? Has she gone down? Kids' church. So um, I was as I was sitting here for, as we were worshiping. Uh, the Lord said, I'm speak, and our kids are highly prophetic. You know, um, by the way, children don't have a junior Holy Spirit. Okay. Hallelujah. Um, Sam, Samuel was one of the, I call him Sam. <laughs> Samuel was one of the greatest prophets and he's, he heard God when he was a kid. So, um, I asked on, I, um, she was worshiping and I, as I was over here, I heard the Lord say, I've given Anna a sight of what is to come and what the Lord is saying. So I called her over and I asked her, are you seeing something? And she said, yes, I am. You know, and this is what she, uh, she's so cute. She's got such lovely handwriting. Um, and she wrote here, you know, I love the way she wrote it. She goes, holy is your name. Glory is your name. Worthy is your name. And this is what she told me. She said, you, I can see the Lord break through in this place. And even before we started the song, she said, um, I wrote it, his hand is touching us. There's a storm brewing, heaven is praising, and angels are coming down, grounds are shaking, breaking holes, overcome. She says, Malachi 3.18, there will be a difference between those who serve God and those who don't, you know? And, um, and, I, um, and I really believe that... Um, she, it's a confirmation of what um, I see that how many of you can feel this in the spirit here in this place and this is what the Lord is doing and he is breaking through and so we just um, we just want to close our eyes in this place at this time whatever area you need your breakthrough in ask the Lord to touch you Praise God. Praise God. Just give the Lord a wave offering in this place. Hallelujah. Um, so welcome this Sunday. Um, today is a fellowship uh, Sunday. We've got lunch um, after the service. So please, everybody stay. Uh, we get to chat. We get to fellowship. Satya, smile. It's biryani. You know, like, Satya was just concerned, you know, that it wasn't something that it, yeah. Are you sad? You can't. Oh, no. By the way, um, all of you, if you want to know what's going on here, Facebook, like our capstone page. Okay, so you'll understand what's going on. Okay, so we posted there. Uh, and if you've emailed us, we will. Uh, put, we're actually going to start a WhatsApp group for just the church members so that uh, people come and say, I don't know anything. Okay. So it will, um, please don't put any forwards on it. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, unless it's really funny. <laughs> okay. But um, we are going to start a WhatsApp group. So if you'd like to know what's going on, Make sure that you let us know. It's going to be one group for the whole church. Um, and we definitely ask no forwards. Not your neighbor saying no forwards. Okay. So please give your names to, uh, to Rachel and um, Stephen. Stephen at the back. Yeah. And uh, even Kevin can write down names. Can you write down names, Kevin? Okay. Okay. We'll tr try. Try really hard. Okay. Kevin will write down everybody's name as heaven. You know that person from heaven? He's the one, you know, or she's the one. So anyway, so um, that's, that's it. When we've got a maximum, 
that is our annual conference uh, coming up in October. Yeah. Um, so um, there is an early bird registration. Why I'm saying this is, by the way, Capstone Church is the last set of people to always register for their our own conferences. And I'm just saying, because we're if we're hosting it in this place, we're going to get filled up. And I'd rather host a conference for our family. To The purpose of the conference is to build everyone here up. So make sure you sign up. Don't let finances be a hindrance for signing up. If you have any financial shortage, we, the, we will cover it. As long as you honor that and turn up. Hallelujah. Never let finances be a reason why you don't attend anything at Capstone. Hallelujah. Okay. Um, and um, so that's, is there any other announcements? Uh, Mondays, we've got the Father's Feast. We've got prayer room on Monday and Thursday mornings. So join the prayer room. We will be speaking and our home groups are going on. And uh, uh, today you'll have uh, the pleasure of uh, hearing both Pastor Rakesh and I. Hallelujah. And if any of, any of you get hungry at exactly 12 o'clock, remember what you do at work. You at least wait till 1. Hallelujah. So nudge your neighbor and say, I'm going to be happy. So uh, praise God. And um, I'm actually going to speak about one of my duties as a pastor. And it is actually to give you all of God's word. And all of God's words, whether we like to hear it or not, okay, is what we need. Jesus gave everything. Am I right? Jesus gave everything for us. He gave up his crown so that we could have a crown. Am I right? Yeah? He gave us, he gave up his life so that we could have a life. He became poor that we might be rich okay and um i had a prof i had a prophetic word and uh that prophetic word was not for me personally it was actually for capstone church and the prophetic word was that part of my calling would be that i would raise up millionaires okay so four people got that Okay, now you have to understand, you're standing, somebody prophetic comes and prophesies over you, saying, you will raise up millionaires. And as a mom, I'm happy. You know, I'm happy when I hear, and the reason, and by the way, we're, the reason for the finances is A, is for the growth of the kingdom. And um, and I can see as I look, I mean, I've known some of you for over a decade. And I've, I can see that many of you have actually crossed the millionaire mark. In the investments that you've made, in the breakthroughs that you've received, you've actually crossed. And this is not the story, the usual story of churches. Am I, are you excited? So now, a prophetic word should be fulfilled. Okay? And um, so I'm going to, um, I, I, there's a survey done, a Gallup survey said this. It says, an average church, 17% say that they tithe. But only 3% actually do. 3% actually do. 40% will give nothing in a year. 91% say they make more money than they have ever in their lives. After coming to the Lord. 71% of pastors believe that church members have changed from being stewards of wealth to consumers of wealth. 
Some, someone said there are three types of givers. The flint, the sponge, and the honeycomb. To get anything out of a flint, you have to hammer it. Then you get only chips and sparks. To get water out of a sponge, you must squeeze it. And the more pressure you use, the more you will get. But the honeycomb just overflows with its own sweetness. What kind of giver are you? Hallelujah. Now God has given us resources. 2 Corinthians 9 speaks about a cheerful giver. Am I right? So how we give is very important. Now, I looked at the survey. I love statistics. You know, I do. I, I, um, if there are 100 people in a church, okay? Okay, let's, there are 100 people in a church and only 3% is actually tithing. Okay? That's three people that who, who will, in my opinion, actually flourish in finance. I was a really giving Christian in the 90s. Okay, I really was. And then I um, got married in, in 2000. Yay. Um, Rakesh has had 18 blissful years. They say he's looking younger and younger each, each year. That shows the kind of care I'm taking of him. And if anybody thinks I'm looking older, that shows the care he's taking of me. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> it's good to have both pastors in the house. Am I right? Am I right? <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, so, um, and then I got challenged by teaching on my giving and I realized I'd actually forgotten to tithe and I owed God and um, prayer is mentioned in the Bible 500 times love is mentioned 400 times giving is mentioned over 2,000 times hallelujah but and this, and this offends the church because we are attached to our finances. But I know personally that God has given us resources and he expects us to share them. Um, I know the story um, I heard of a wealthy man who was shopping with a 16-year-old son. His son wanted this new computer system, uh, a new computer system, it seems, okay? Uh, IT person here. Um, and he showed it to his dad, you know, like top end uh, Mac, you know, and it says, um, the wealthy man looked at the sun and said, it cost 2,500 uh, pounds. And the son said, yeah, dad, but we've got the money. To which the son, to which his dad says, we. Who said anything about we having anything? I know what I've got. I don't know what you have. You see, the son misunderstood the nature and the relationship with the father. He thought he could choose whatever the father spent his money on. While the father wasn't careless, God owns it all. We're not a consumer Christianity. We are a steward Christianity. And we're accountable. Come on. We're accountable for what we spend our money on. Hallelujah. And the road to blessing I know biblically is giving. And those of you disagree with me, we can actually have a, a conversation about what is true wealth. Hallelujah. This is the one area God says, challenge me on this. He says, bring in your tithes, bring in your offerings, and then, wait, wait, and, sorry, and your barns will overflow. 
Hallelujah. Not your neighbor and say, and then. So if you learn programming as I did, if there is a if, there is a then. If you bring in your tithes and offerings, and when you don't, you're actually stealing from God. Now, your tithes belong to your local church. Please don't tell me that you're giving your tithes to so-and-so. If this is your local church, hello. You know where I tithe? Thank you, Mikey. Tithes belong to your local church. Someone asked me, Old Testament, someone asked me, like, how much do I tithe? Old Testament is 10%. Hallelujah. But we don't live in the Old Testament. You know, when you're, you're earning a hundred dollars or a hundred pounds, it's easy to give up. It's easy to give 10, 10, 10 pounds. But when you're earning a hundred thousand, it's difficult to give 10,000. But he is a source of all wealth and tithing. And this is my duty as a pastor in training the church towards financial stewardship and financial blessing. Hallelujah. I am so happy to share this with you. Okay? So, 2 Corinthians 9, 6 to 10 says, Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. Who sows generously will also reap gener generously. Each man should give what he has already decided in his heart to give. Never give emotionally. Purpose in your heart what you're going to give. Set a percentage of your income. Rennie, can I give you an example? Years ago, how many years ago was this? 10 years ago? 10 years ago, Rennie, if you just stand up, so this is a testimony, isn't this not? 10 years ago, Rennie went through one of the worst times in her life. A am I right? And you were in a financial, and I love Rennie, come here. And Rennie was in such a financial situation that I didn't know how to help her. And I knew that there was only one source of help, and that is God. And it was the toughest thing for me to do, was to actually tell her, like as a human being, you want to tell her, keep your money, right? Like whatever she's earning, you want to say keep, she was a single mom, and you want to say keep your money. But I remember I was dropping her back home in the car, and I said, I said, Renny darling, I need you to sew. And we both just looked at each other because we could not see how she was going to sew. And I said, just start with little. How much was it? 10 pounds. And in 10 years, have you, how has the Lord blessed you? Immensely. I can't even explain how much he's blessed me. There's always, I've never had any lack. He's always given. From that point, she grew in her workplace, got visas, she bought her own house, isn't it? Yeah. Settled in this country. Do you have a car now? Yeah. See, establishment. The Lord will establish his people, you know? And for me, I this is my great, it was tough for me. Like, I'm sort of like her mom, okay, to tell her to give. Because it was tough. I knew how she was struggling. But the greatest road to blessing is giving. Amen? I can... <laughs> Tithing is God's mandate. Offering is your generosity. If you don't tithe, you're stealing from God. Returning to God is tithing. Not tithing is robbing God. So as a church, we want to be the best stewards of our wealth. We want to be tithing. Hallelujah. And we want to be bringing in offerings. Offerings you can, you can give anywhere, really. You can give here, you can give anywhere. 
Tithing is important. If you want to be blessed after taxes, tithe after taxes. If you want to be blessed before taxes, tithe before taxes. That's all I say. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this is my privilege to actually teach you on how to have enough. To enjoy the sufficiency of our God. Give. Hallelujah. For those of you who want to step into that, raise your hands and our good looking ushers. Let's give the ushers a hand. Oh, and Johnson comes now. Okay. When I said good looking, Johnson steps up. <laughs> I know he came running. How many of the men want to be ushers now? <laughs> we are a family. Those of you welcome here first time. Um. <laughs> give on to the Lord. And when you're ready, purpose what you're going to give. And when you're ready, come forward joyfully and give. As the worship team leads us in joyful worship. Father Lord, I just thank you for every offering that's being made in this place, Father Lord. Father Lord, as people prepare, Father Lord, speak to them, Holy Spirit, as to how much to give, what to give, and bless this offering, Father. Father, I, I pray that I will see, Lord, your prophetic word release, Lord, that we will see multimillionaires rise up in this house, that we will be the greatest givers in the kingdom, Father Lord. And I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.